system of the election of the President of the USA. Introduction The U.S. Constitution provides for a presidential form of government. The framers of the U.S. Constitution spent a lot of time deciding on the method of electing the president. After a good deal of discussion, they adopted a plan for the indirect election of the president by an electoral college, which is now embodied in Article 2, Sections 1, 2, and 3 of the Constitution. Qualifications for the President The Constitution imposes three tests on a candidate for the presidency. A. Age. A candidate must be at least 35 years of age. B. Citizenship. A candidate must be a natural born citizen of the U.S. C. Residence. He had resided in the country for at least 14 years before his election. D. He is not a member of Congress. Mode of election. The mode of election of the U.S. president is indirect under the Constitution, which provides that the president should be elected by an electoral college consisting of as many presidential electors as the number of members in both houses of the Congress. Stages of the presidential election. In practice, there are the following stages in the election of the U.S. president A. Nomination of presidential candidates. The candidates for the presidency are nominated by the parties. Since 1832, the two major parties, that is, the Democrats and the Republicans have established the practice of choosing their representatives at national conventions. b. Campaign. After the nominations of the presidential candidates and their subsequent election by their respective party conventions, a nationwide presidential campaign starts. The parties set up national and state committees and opened headquarters in two great cities. Each party issues a campaign textbook containing the party platform, the candidates' biographies and other material required for propaganda. E. Nomination of Presidential Electors The next stage is the nomination of the presidential electors in several states. These electors are important party leaders. F. Election of Presidential Electors the next stage in the presidential election falls in November of the election year when presidential electors are to be elected. Section the first of Article 2 of the Constitution of the USA deals with the election of presidential electors, electoral college. 1. Number of presidential electors. The electoral college consists of as many presidential electors as the number of members in both houses of Congress. At present, there are 538 members in the Electoral College and the House of Representatives and Senate consist of 438 and 100 members, respectively. 2. Representation made by each state. Each state is to appoint as many electors as it is senators and representatives in Congress. 3. Method of election. The method of election of presidential electors has been left to be determined by the state legislature concerned. To begin with, they were elected by the state legislature, now they are elected by the people of the state concerned. 4. Election of the President by Electors. The presidential electors meet in the capital of each state on the first Monday after the second Wednesday in December and record their votes for the presidential candidates. 5. Voting. A certificate of election is then sent to the chairman of the Senate by each state on the 6th of January, and the Congress meets in a joint session where votes are counted. The person securing an absolute majority of votes is declared elected. To secure an absolute majority, a candidate must receive 270 of 538 votes. Installation After his election, the new president is installed into office on January 20th of the ensuing year by taking the oath of office. Term of office. The presidential term is four years, and according to the 22nd Amendment, a president can stand for re-election only once. Salary of the President The U.S. President receives a salary of $200,000 a year and an extra $50,000 for expenses, occupies an official residence, and enjoys other privileges such as travel and official entertainment allowances. Succession 
if the office of the president falls vacant due to his death, resignation, impeachment or inability to discharge the powers and duties of the said office the vice president succeeds to his office for the remaining period of his term.